I'm pretty sure that is on my property. All right, as you can see behind me, there's some roses and a balloon. Well, today happens to be Valentine's Day, which means we are two weeks, two weeks away from closing. So that's good news. We've had a very productive week. Um, lots of things happening. Um, and this video is going to talk about all of those things. And I've got some uh, video of me hiking, um, exploring the woods, finding all the survey markers, you know, the boundaries of the property so we can close out that contingency. Uh, we, I talked to the electric company, the uh, water company. I've got my insurance for builder's risk um, to make sure I've got a policy in place when we start building um, that the uh, structures are insured um, during construction. Um, and the perk test has been delayed because we've just had a ton of rain. And so the uh, ground is just way too soft and it's difficult to get up there, especially with 20,000 pounds of uh, truck, tractor, trailer weight. Um, it would just destroy it. You might get stuck up there, so um, they're gonna wait till next week. Hopefully, they'll dry out. But um, today is beautiful. Um, it was like 60s, I think, today, and sunny. Um, so I'm actually gonna grill some uh, some steaks tonight for for uh, Valentine's Day. So, all right, while I get dinner going, our Valentine's Day dinner, um, you guys can watch the updates of everything that's happened this week. All right, it's been a busy week getting everything ready. I. Uh, Learned a lot this week. One of the things I learned was we have a 911 address that's different than our mailing address because uh, technically we don't have a mailing address at the physical lake location of the new place. We have to get a PO box in town there uh, since it's a rural property. Um, but we have to have a 911 address, so we do got 911, which is good. But I have to get that established into the right location because right now it just points to a place on Google Maps that uh, it is not in the right place and it's probably because there's not a building yet on the property so once I get that building put in I can um, attach the uh, actual 911 address to it so that's one thing I got to deal with uh, the other one is the survey I've been going back and forth with uh, the title insurance company as they're doing lots of research I'm doing my own research onto uh, the easements for ingress and egress onto the property I'm trying to locate the right survey so I don't have to have one done again um, on that uh, easement part uh, just to make sure that I could actually drive up to the property and and uh, uh, put a road in um, so I can get back there uh, oh I contacted the utilities so that's all squared away um, power company you know got all my pricing for uh, whether I go overhead or underground um, it's, it's about I think they said three dollars and fifty cents a foot um, for overhead and eight dollars if I want to go underground but this first section I'm gonna go overhead maybe to the main house later I'll go underground uh, but then it's gonna cost me a thousand dollars for the uh, transformer on the pole and then another two hundred and seventy dollars for the uh, the meter uh, loop and then uh, water that was better news the documents that you know from buying the property it said it was, there was a water tap that had been tapped at the property line uh, which is one thing but it's actually has service to the property area there's a meter put in and you know that frost free hydrant that's there there is a meter on it the meter was just pulled because they didn't want anybody stealing the water the neighbors stealing water or anything so they pulled the meter so all I got to do is once we close on the property is call them up pay my deposit and meet them out there and they'll put a new meter in um, the only requirement is I put a, uh, a 4x4 into the ground that's got the actual physical address, uh, you know, the location, the 911 address, that's what that's needed for. Um, so they know exactly uh, where to put that uh, meter in. So that's good news and that's no cost to me. I also got uh, my new estimate for the, the uh, manufactured metal building, the, the pole barn uh, shop uh, slash uh, living space apartment that we're going to put in first. It was only a couple thousand more than what I had originally estimated. So that's good news. The only problem is they are behind by six months. They probably can't get me in for another six months, which means uh, mid to late summer before they can uh, put the building in. So that's, 
that's unfortunate, but it might just take me that long to get all the infrastructure put in, um, get the site work done and the foundation put in. A lot of work to do, um, you know, come starting March. Um, plus we have a lot of rain. This rain has been ridiculous and it's so soft up, right up, up on the property right now, the ground that I can't even get my perk test people, the environmental company to get there and do the percolation test. Um, it's still not done yet. They're thinking maybe next week um, if this can dry out. I was out at the property last night just to see how soft it still was and it's still soft and sunny today, but uh, tomorrow there's a forecast for more rain. So I don't know, hopefully, hopefully uh, it'll dry out soon and they can get that perk test done next week. Oh, another thing related to the uh, survey, I found that uh, there was a track split um, in the survey that there's an acre and a half or so on the far side of pasture right on the edge that uh, I guess they were originally going to sell to the neighbors because it really should, it's part of the neighbor's pasture, um, but it never went through. So that's still part of the property that we're buying. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. Um, we can maybe fence it off and put something over there. It's an acre and a half, so it's enough for at least, you know, one horse. Um, so it's possible we just have to go through the woods to, to get to that area. Um, or I can try to sell it to them and maybe make a few bucks. We'll see. I'm um, not sure why it fell through. Maybe they didn't have the money to buy it, so they didn't do it. But um, anyway, that, that's an update on that. Um, I'm actually heading out right now to go and go find all of the stakes or the, the uh, survey pins um, or markers uh, so that way I could uh, uh, mark that off my list for, as a contingency so I don't have to get another survey done which will cost thousands of dollars because it's such a big property. Um, I just need to uh, go out and locate all of the, the existing markers and if I can do that and uh, document them then I'm in good shape. So. Um, that'll be a, a, good, a good cost saving. So that's gonna be a good hike. You know, it's 47 acres. I gotta hike that whole perimeter um, and find them all. So it'll be fun. So before we get to the, the land to hike it and um, mark, you know, find those markers, I'm gonna stop by and uh, see Michaela. She's, uh, she's at her horse riding lessons right now. So I'm gonna check out and see how she's doing. There she is right there on her horse. Head to the arena. How was it today? Good lesson? Slow but good. Slow but good. You mean girlfriend was slow? Yes. Yeah. Except for yesterday, which was very surprising. Yeah, I remember. Remember that? I don't know how that's going. It's just. All right, that was uh, that was fun. 
I always love coming out here after work and watching Michaela train on the horses or on the ho on her horse. Um, now let's head out to the property and get those uh, survey markers found. You know when you're uh, moving to the country when uh, you're on paved road and then all of a sudden um, you're not. <laughs> all right, here I am in the, the woods and I'm um, hiking around looking for the first pin in the uh, south uh, east corner and uh, one of the neighbor dogs kind of followed me out here. I have to see him. There he is. <laughs> guess I'll have to deal with that. Some better fencing, I guess. Um, but I'm going to head out and uh, try to, I think I'm close to the first pin. All right, we're going to go through there and I'm just looking at my at Google Maps and using that to kind of get a general idea of where I'm at and where I think the pin is going to be at. I think the pin is going to be right in that corner there. If you can see kind of some uh, cleared lines, it's going to be right in that corner there. So I got to head this way. Uh, looks like I just stumbled on a clear trail area. So this must be that, that gap in the woods that I saw in the satellite view. So I think I'll head this way. All right, I think I see what looks to be like a pin or a stake in the ground. Right there. There's the marker. And actually, there's the uh, other marker that was on the tree. One down. I think there's like 10 to go. Okay, so well, I found the first uh, survey pin. And according to the uh, survey, it says that it is at the southeast corner of the section. Um, it is a four inch cedar that the tag will be on and that there is an uh, existing four by six stone and there is a one and a half inch aluminum cap. And that's what I found. So uh, I think we're good to move on to the next one. Okay, from this first pin, it looks like the property then, the property line heads down that trail there uh, due north and right to the next, the northeast corner of the property. Um, but the survey follows, um, oh, looks like there's an old tag on this tree right here. There we go, there's another one. So it's been marked multiple times with the various, various surveys that have been done um, right within this area. So um, according to the survey, I need to follow this property line um, back up to the pasture area and head due west along the southern uh, border of the property um, to the next corner. Okay, I worked my way all the way from the other, the, no the uh, south, East corner, all the way up to the pasture, across the pasture, there's my truck here, and now to this fence line and this fence post, which is supposed to be the uh, next survey uh, marker. And it's labeled on there as fence post. So that's it. And then I'm documenting all of the details on uh, the GPS app. Okay, now we gotta head back north along this fence line up to the tree line for the next corner post of uh, the fence line. Just located a potential barn cat. All right, I just came up to the pasture along the fence line, found the corner of the fence, and around the tree and into the woods. Um, Property then goes uh, due west that way, and then right there. Clearly marked. All right, looks like I'm about to climb down. All 
All right, that's where we're at. I've got about halfway. I gotta get myself all the way to there. So I'm gonna start following along that ridge up there all the way until I get to that tree line there, which that corner there should be another marker for the uh, next corner I need to get to. I just happened to notice that the rocks are lined up like this was an old road. I just noticed that as I was coming through here. That uh, on both sides, it looks like this used to be an old road that went through here. Or at least a wide trail, but all the stone has been moved to the sides. It's all overgrown through there, but I'll go up and around. Yeah, it looks like that road continues on down that way. I mean, we're talking a really old road that was there a long time ago. But that goes down the hill, so I'm not, I need to make, start making my way back up and get up there. So I'm gonna go up higher. Okay, there's the pasture and fence line again. Let's keep working my way that way. line in the pasture up there so the marker should be right around here somewhere oh there's a corner post back in there okay that's the corner of the other people's property on the other side so the survey marker should be here somewhere, or I think maybe it's labeled as a uh, corner fence post. All right, well, I'm gonna have to uh, take my backpack off and uh, look at the actual uh, survey to see what the marker says it is. I, I believe it's this fence post right behind me here. This one right here. Uh, it says FC, three inch FC. So FC is fence corner. So that's it. I think we found this one. And a waypoint. So that corner post was up there and this, this property line is actually clearly marked. Um, with this uh, purple paint. I'm seeing it on every tree on my way down. So that's interesting. It appears there is a actual stake property marker right here. And the rock is painted, so that's probably a marker. I don't see any other kind of marker. But I'm gonna look at the survey again and see what kind of marker here was north to see if there was something officially marked here. Okay, I checked out the survey and the copy I have does not have this marker on it, but there is officially a marker here. Right there. So that might be on one of the, uh, the other original surveys, which I don't have. Um, and that's why I'm going around looking at, uh, looking for all the uh, survey pins to see what's out here along the property lines to see what I can identify. Um, so that way I don't have to pay for another survey uh, to be done. Um, as long as I can locate these property lines and I'm okay with uh, where they're at, we should be good to go. Okay, come back to that road, the lower section of that road I was 
encountered earlier. It clearly is. Well, now it looks like a drainage ditch here. There's the no trespassing sign or private property. Yes, it is private property. I'm gonna have to put some of those up facing my direction. Yeah, this was definitely a road. Look at that, we're right up through there. Very cool. Looks like we're coming up to some kind of bluff line. Actually, with a nice view. Oh, another road. A trail. That definitely looks like a trail. But it ends at my property line. Or at least it's overgrown where it's at. Which means the neighbors probably use this for their own getting around their border of their property. And since no one has actually lived out here on my property in a very, very, very long time, it's all overgrown. All right, so I think the next pin should be down here somewhere. I'm gonna have to check my uh, GPS map, Google Maps and see where I'm at. Yep, we're close. I think just a few feet down there and we'll we'll find it down there somewhere. And here's a fence. I can see that there's some wire here. So an old uh, boundary fence running that way. So this must be it. This must be the corner. So I need to find the marker. And, oh, there it is, right behind me. Look at that. Nice. And on the survey, it says rebar, existing rebar. And sure enough, there it is, existing rebar. All right. We found the northwest corner of the property. Beautiful out here. God, I can't believe this is gonna be ours. I can come out here and hike anytime I want. There's so much to do around here, out in this land. Look at all that native Arkansas stone. It's just like a, a ton of it. It's a garden of mossy stone. This is like a perfect spot right in here. I mean, for as um, hilly as this uh, property is, this is a, a fairly um, flat, open spot. So a perfect spot maybe to put a, a little cabin or something, just a little off-grid cabin come down to and camp in. It is uh, just unbelievable how peaceful and quiet. I guess it's not unbelievable. I'm just happy. It's just so peaceful out here. So quiet. Man, I love it. Love it. I can't wait. Well, I've come to the Next marker has a tree stand, neighbor's property. There's the marker. More trail camera there. I won't get in front of that. It's nice having these uh, kind of old trails cut through here for when we cut in all of our new horse trails and riding along this ridge here, we'll be able to have this great view. It's hard to see on the camera, I know, but, but it's gonna be fun cutting all the new trails through this forest for the ATVs and for the horses. 
a lot of work ahead of us. All right, looks like we're coming up to our, the northeast corner. Oh, there's a tree stand up there and it looks like a fence post. And that is gonna be our final survey marker to find before we head back up to our starting point on the southeast corner that we marked first. Okay. There's the rebar. Right there. And we got the tree eaten marker there. Now we just need to head up this trail heading due south. Um, all uphill <laughs> to get to our starting point. All right, coming up the hill. Got a good evergreen forest here. Right on the boundary. Oop. What is that? It looks like a uh, tent or a hunting blind of some sort. Let's go up there and take a look. Yep, sure is. Huh. Hopefully no one's living in there. All right, what do you guys think I should do? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that is on my property. And I don't think I'm gonna open it just yet. I think I'll wait. We'll see what's in there, a different video. Okay, I think I see the pin that we first started at, all the way up there. All right, let's see, where are we? There we go. Here we go, we're right there, back to where we started. So that means we successfully, I and you, successfully hiked this whole 47 acre piece of property, found all of the survey pins, and uh, boundary markers, and uh, feel confident that uh, we're in good shape. <laughs> Whew, made it back safely. All right, well, that was an adventure. Um, that was a really good hike. And now I'm back. Looks like it might be a really good sunset out here. There's a sunset behind me.
Mm -hmm. <laughs> is it good? Mm -hmm. Really good? Mm. Is it good? Yeah. Really good? Yeah. All right. It, it, it like melts. It melts in your mouth. It melts in your mouth? Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs>